Well, thank you very much this is, uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to talk. I just heard uh, the, the uh, discussion about uh, OCT and ultrasound in the combined setting. Fascinating, uh, I, I definitely like that. Um, I'm gonna talk about OCT, optical coherence tomography. It's a laser-based uh, system for imaging arteries and, and our use of OCT is a little bit different than was just previously discussed. We use OCT to guide an intervention. Uh, and so probably we're very early compared to uh, some of the other companies that have been uh, presenting. But just to kind of give you an overview, we're here uh, to, uh, to raise money. I know this probably shocks you. Uh, maybe you're really surprised. Uh, we're raising $5 million. Uh, we have $10 million, $12 million in the project uh, so far. We have a close to Series A. Uh, you can read the slide. Um, but we think that the, the $5 million that we're raising now will be used to complete our first in, in man studies in, in, the, in Paraguay. We're about halfway through that, uh, um, that analysis uh, thus far. So we are, uh, but we believe that $5 million will get us uh, to the completion of that. So that'll, be, that'll close out a Series B uh, financing uh, for us. Series C then will, will be required uh, to get full FDA approval for the product. We think that'll be a 20 to $25 million uh, funding effort, which will come um, uh, at some later date. So I'm actually just gonna show one video clip. Uh, but I'll tell you in advance, uh, since I have a, I have a la uh, the, uh, the laser, maybe it will work. Uh, it's hard to kind of do the presentation without uh, a pointer or something to tell you kind of what's going on. So I'm gonna describe it first so you kind of know what, what you'll be seeing. Once I start the video, I'm afraid that the laser pointer is not gonna be particularly helpful. Uh, but we can continue, can discuss this. But the video is going to be of a patient that we treated in, in uh, South America. First, there'll be a short video of the device, which has an OCT imaging system on it, a series of gui uh, guide wire that can be exited out the end of the catheter and then can be exited out the side. And for the interventional cardi cardiologist, the key element for crossing chronic total occlusions, which is what this device is designed to do, is to be able to exit out the side of a catheter with a guide wire. So you, uh, the, and the concept is that the catheters are frequently in the quote subintimal space or they're kind of used to say they're like a car stuck in the mud and that car needs to get back on into the main road. The way to get back onto the main road is to get a guide wire back onto the main road so you can get the car out of the mud, let's say. It's probably a terrible analogy, but it's the, sort of the best I could do at this hour. Uh, and so um, we'll, we'll show you how we use this guide wire mechanism to go from uh, the subintimal space uh, back into the so-called quote true lumen. And the true lumen uh, is the target uh, and, and in the patients would that have chronic total occlusions and this is the patient population that I should have alluded to first, that that's the patient population we're dealing with. And these are patients who have a completely blocked coronary artery and in that blockage uh, in, time, in terms of trying to cross the blockage, uh, the, the catheters end up in the quote subintimal space. They end up in the mud. So it's really a common problem when you're trying to cross a chronic total occlusion and then once you, once you get buried, you have to get back on track and our device gets you back on track. The name of the device is called the Acolyte. I uh, have to di digress just a little bit. We actually want to call it the Sidekick. Uh, I have sort of a West Texas as a background, uh, if you will. Uh, because it kicks the, the guide wire, I like the cowboy references, but it kicks the guide wire to the side of the catheter. Sidekick is, makes a lot of sense. I think you can all see that. I can tell uh, that everybody understands it. But uh, sidekick was trademarked, so we changed the name to acolyte, which is the French term for sidekick. So I know that you think we're very sophisticated uh, in how we've uh, done all our analysis and our naming processes. The acolyte is really the, uh, the device that allows us to aim a guide wire into the true lumen and get us out of the subminimal space or the trouble space. So we'll start the video and see how well the, the uh, how well this works. Uh, so I can, of course that works there, fine. Uh, well you can see, oh yeah, that's good. Huh, all that preface and then I, uh, it's, it's okay. Okay, so this shows the acolyte catheter down here, it has a laser-based OCT directed system, it has a guide wire that's used uh, when the catheter is positioned. Uh, this is the OCT image that we produce. Uh, 
and the, the and then we have an algorithm that tells us where this particular guide wire is going to be exited when it goes out into the true lumen. So all of this uh, is computer generated and the guide wire that we're going to use to do all of this is positioned here inside the, the catheter. So this is the OCT image of the catheter. This is the OCT image of Ken Chen's finger. Uh, Ken is here. And uh, so the catheter, and these are the controls that go into the catheter. So the goal is going to be to get this, uh, put this into a patient and, uh, and, and see what we can see. Right now, we're just uh, showing that on the, on the bench, we're showing that the guide wire is being pulled back. And this may seem like something kind of trivial, but then when the guide wire is pulled back, the guide wire was here and it disappears. When it's re-advanced, it comes out the side of the catheter directed where these red lines, the guardrails are. So that's the, the direction and trajectory of the guide wire. And when you turn it over to the side, you can see that the red lines go over to the side. And uh, no, I'm sorry, that was a, uh, okay. So now then, um, this is the, the vessel that's completely blocked off. So it's the left anterior descending coronary artery, which is a big vessel in this patient. And it's closed off right there. So it's an LAD, chronic total occlusion, it's called. So we need to get across that uh, with our catheter, with the guide wire. And you can just try guide wires first. And this is probably more clinically uh, uh, directed than maybe some of you might uh, be truly interested in. But unless you understand something about this, then it, the rest of it doesn't make so much sense. So now we're trying to get across this chronic total occlusion with guide wires. And this is the big dilemma that we've had. We talked about, we heard about poke and hope early on in a previous presentation. So this is poke and hope in the coronary arteries with guide wires, and we've done that uh, for years. And unfortunately, poking and hoping without imaging uh, isn't a very, uh, has not been a rewarding experience. You can see this is an angiogram now of looking at the space. The, the fluoroscopy and the angiography tells you nothing about what's really going on inside the artery. So once we connect up the, the acolyte, uh, the French version of the sidekick to imaging, then we'll get to see, we'll get to compare. So this is the OCT image. It's coming right off of this catheter and it's, it's inside the artery. It just tells you everything. So we're gonna aim these red lines at the true lumen, at the track that we want to get into. This is normal artery up here. You would never wanna point the red lines at the normal artery. So the safety profile of this particular device is really kind of the key element uh, for us. Uh, so this is called the adventitia, this is the media, and then this is the perivascular uh, structure, lipid, uh, I'm sorry, fat that's just around the artery. If you were to aim a guide wire out in this direction, you then you had the risk of perforating the artery, right? So if you aim the system down in the opposite direction, so this is the so-called pulsating true lumen uh, down here. And so that's the target. We're stuck in the mud up here. We want to get back down here and in, into the correct path. So, we possession positions, I'm sorry, the red lines. This is the, the angle for the guide wire is gonna come out. We position the red lines over the, the uh, true lumen, and then we advance the guide wire. So here's the guide wire, it's gonna be advanced. It'll be advanced into the true lumen. And you can see fluoroscopically uh, that there's very little information fluoroscopically that tells you where to aim or direct anything. And now then when the guide wire is advanced in this uh, direction, then that is the guide wire being advanced into the true lumen. So this is a, uh, uh, a big event because there are 350,000, 400,000 patients in the US. You see the guide wire is in the true lumen. Now this whole area is going to be uh, ballooned and stented, uh, which is the common practice. This shows the guide wire going across the, the uh, tissue plane. It's gonna go into the true lumen over here in this penetration. So uh, I talked to Bram Zuckerman at the FDA. He said, I'm glad it kind of works, but I'm glad it really works. But he said, I'm really more interested in the safety profile because we can aim away from trouble. This is trouble, and this is where you want to aim. You see the guide wire going into this area over here that we're trying to aim at. So the safety profile is really, really uh, uh, dramatically improved. I asked Bram, I said, does this constitute an approval? He said, no, uh, not really, but I th thought it was worth asking. Uh, known Bram for a while. So now then, here's the artery after it's been ballooned and stented, um, uh, just to show you this. So this patient was headed to bypass surgery with absolute certainty uh, if this procedure had not worked. So we want to convert all of the patients currently that are being referred to bypass surgery, uh, you know, 354,000, almost all of them, not really all, but almost all of them for a chronic total occlusions because 
because the doctors do not have a very effective tool for treating these, and they're reluctant to treat the total occlusions. They send the patient to surgery. They find the surgery, oh, gee, I don't want to do that. So if we had a tool, which we believe this to be the tool, that could make it really safe to approach, and we call this an anti-grade crossing, crossing from in a forward direction. There are other things called retrograde crossings where you go down another artery and come back up, and it's, it takes really, really a long time. Uh, this for an anti-grade crossing, we worked for 45 minutes in this patient trying the traditional approach unsuccessfully, and with, and we, with this particular guide wire, it took us seven minutes to get it into the, uh, into the true lumen, back on track, out of the mud. If you that's a terrible, I'm gonna to have to change the analogy there. It doesn't sound, uh, it's not very fair, but, but the bottom line is that we have, uh, we believe a way to make all of the doctors and the interventionists that are, uh, are interested in, in uh, treating chronic total occlusion, we, we can give them the tool that'll really make a difference for them uh, because give them the confidence that they can, uh, you know, get a, a better outcome for, uh, for uh, treating a CTO. And in a way, give them the confidence just to try. Right now, a lot of the interventional cardiologists actually do not try because they, their experience, and I have had, this, had the same experience, um, you just you poke and you hope, and we heard that term used uh, already, poke and hope in the spinal uh, canal, that's a terrible place to poke and hope. And I tell you, another really bad place to poke and hope is in the coronary arteries. Poking with the guide wires and trying to hope that you're gonna get into the true lumen, get in the right spot, uh, get out of the wrong place, uh, is, is unfavorable. If you have a way to, let's say, how's, what's the right term? Maybe just lean things in your favor as an interventional cardiologist, then imaging has the chance uh, to do that with OCT. The reason we like OCT is because it's so small. Uh, it's a laser-based system, it's optical fiber, and we can combine that with the guide wire. If we added ultrasound to it in this particular uh, setting, then this catheter gets a little bit large for us. Uh, and to get it into, we. Uh, and I'm really impressed with the previous uh, discussions about the combination uh, of the catheters. I think that's, that could be potentially exciting. Um, but for us right now, we need small because it's in the coronary arteries, it's in the subnormal space in the coronary arteries. And this is like a four French catheter, so it's one point, what, what is that, 1.3 millimeters? So uh, that has worked out, um, worked out well for us. And so um, we think that that could be uh, something that would drive further adoption in, in physicians that want to treat CTOs but are nervous about doing it, and this will give them the chance to get a really good outcome. So thank you very much.